Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a very special episode for you because we are going to cover this year in perfume 2019 episode. We are slowly ticking along to modern day and I'm very excited to do these videos because I basically made the decision that uh, after we're done, after we get to modern day, we're going to get to the year 2022. And these videos, if you guys are new to the channel, they're all about highlighting fragrances and decants and um, samples that I plan on talking about or that I have in my collection from a specific year. And uh, I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to rank these videos. It's a huge undertaking, but I, I kind of l tossed out a balloon and floated the idea because I wanted to get your feedback. And multiple, multiple people said they thought it would be a great idea uh, that uh, it would be a good way to revisit uh, some of the lists. Plus, I've acquired new things since I last did them. And early on, you know, before the 1980s, uh, I think it was like 1977 or 78 where I gave each year its own video. Before that, it was like 70 to 76, you know, 60 to 69. Like I, gave, I did huge amounts of time and kind of lumped everything together. So I might go back and kind of rank them and, and do more videos from the older days on individual years, but there won't be as many fragrances in the list. But I think it would be a cool video to do, even if it's only five or seven fragrances. You know, how, how neat would it be to do a ranked list for, of fragrances from 1973 or, you know, something like that. Uh, and so this is the real Fraghead content. You know, this is not for someone that's going to get offended by the way uh, my Texas accent comes across or, you know, something like that. If I'm not talking about your favorite hyped fragrances, this channel is probably not for you. Uh, but to all of the people who have been with me along this journey, I hope you're getting something out of these videos. I love getting on here and talking about fragrances with you guys. It's a, um, it's something that I just really enjoy doing. I've loved the connections and, you know, it's, a uh, it's really opened my eyes to how big the world of perfume is, number one, and number two, how amazing some of the people who are in this community really are. I mean, there's so many shite people out there nowadays, and uh, I feel like this community is mostly made up of amazing, wonderful people. Uh, there, there obviously is a bad apple or two uh, that you're not going to get, you're not going to be able to get away from in any community. And it's funny because uh, we were having this conversation with, I've had this talk with a couple of my subscribers and many of them have said, you know what, whether it's the mountain bike community or the wet shaving community or the community for people who like to play video games or whatever the community is, there's always going to be that. Uh, but this is supposed to be a hobby. This is supposed to be something we get on here. We talk about the things that we love because we enjoy doing it. Uh, you know, you should be happy and excited for people when they get a new fragrance or when they discover something new. I always want to hear you guys' thoughts because I never am going to be the person who sits up here and says, I know what's best and you don't. Absolutely not. That's not how, that's not what this channel is about. Uh, this is uh, not a channel for me to get on here and flex about my collection. This is not a channel, you know, where I'm here to show off. Uh, it's a channel where I really want to share, you know, the uh, love and adoration that I have for, for perfume and how it makes me feel. And I want to share some of that with you guys and I want to get some of that back from you guys. And uh, it's been an amazing journey so far. You know, uh, in the next couple months, we'll come up on our one year anniversary of the channel, which is crazy to think about. But I've done a ton of videos. If you're new to the channel... Just go back, sort by earliest videos, and you can just spend weeks watching my videos probably because number one, they're long. They're like conversational settings like this. Uh, and, you know, number two, I do a lot of them. Uh, I've kind of made it part of my routine and I'm a very routine oriented person. And so when it's in my routine, I'm doing it. If it's not, I'm not even thinking about it, you know? Uh, so let's start. Let's do with 2019 scent of the day is what we're going to begin with. And I went to the office today, as you can see, anytime I'm wearing a buttoned up shirt, 99% of the time, I probably went to the office. Uh, and so today I wore uh, a fragrance that you guys might chuckle at a little bit. It's from 2005 
and it is what I think is a Pierre Bourdon creation. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, and it's a fragrance called Original Santal by the House of Creed. Now, this is an older 75 mil bottle, which is what you want. You can tell the older Creed boxes by the logo all over the back, which I really liked these boxes. They no longer do 75 or 125 mil bottles. They're all 50 and 100, and I avoid those like the plague. The only 50 or 100 mil bottle I currently own is, um, is, uh, there is a, oh, what is it? Um, it is a, uh, oh, it'll come to me in just a second, I'm sure. But, um, I do have a 100 mil fragrance, and I would not buy another one. Now, this is going to drive me crazy. I have to, I have to remember which 100 mil bottle that I own. Um... Let's see here. Uh, let me just look through it real quick. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to grab it. It's right here. Uh, it is... Yes, Himalaya. That's right. This is the only one that I currently own in 100 mils. And I do feel like it's lost something uh, because I used to have a 4 ounce. I used to have a um, 120 mil of this. And I do feel like that hundred that uh, hundred mil that I have has lost uh, a little bit of what made it so special, especially the opening of the vintages. They were beautiful, but um, this is still a good perfume. You know, I'm uh, I I work to work, and what I was thinking all day is this: I was thinking that if you stuck this under my nose right now, and I had no experience with this fragrance, if I had no scent memory attached to this fragrance, uh, I would not like it. I would hate it because it's everything that I hate right now. It's uh, sweet. It's goopy. It's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's this modern masculine in that it has this level of extra sweetness to it. And you know what? Uh, I actually have, let's see if I, I've kind of moved my collection around, so it's hard for me to reach back and just grab stuff like I used to because I don't remember where everything is. Um, but I have some older bottles of Yope uh, Om from the late 80s, and that was a Pierre Bourdon creation as well. Uh, and Mont Blanc Individual, which was a Pierre Bourdon creation as well, all smell very similar. So I'm thinking this is a Pierre Bourdon, especially with the Ghost Perfumer book that came out. Uh, but... This is one I don't think that anyone's ever officially verified, but I'm pretty sure it is. The other thing, uh, and, the, and the reason I do like it is because I do have this scent and memory attached to this. This is my second full bottle. I actually had a 75 mil bottle of original Santal, and I went through the entire thing, and now I'm on my second one, and I'm probably halfway through. I probably only have 35 mil or 40 mils left, I would think. Um, and so, but if it wasn't for that attachment, that scent memory, I don't think I would like this nowadays. It's not something that I go for now, but because of that scent memory and attachment and the fact that I've worn it for many years, you know, over the last decade, it's kind of been a part of my rotation. Uh, I, I do enjoy it and I do tend to reach for that in the cooler, you know, today it was like a high of 70 uh, and it was in the 50s to the 70s, which in Texas is great. We'll take that all day. But I usually reach for it in the autumn or the cooler weather. I usually don't wear original Santal in the warmer weather. But you could because it's a creed and it does have this orange tree absolute and ginger opening. Uh, there is this extra freshness in original Santal, which Yop Om um, kind of dives right into the heliotrope and, and the... Um, you know, that sweet vanilla undertone. And this also has that. But it does feel like maybe in the opening there's just a little more freshness. Maybe it's a little bit more wearable in other seasons. Creeds are always wearable almost any time, even in the high heat for the most part. But uh, yeah, that was my scent of the day. Uh, okay, so there's two perfumes. I couldn't find the decants to show you, but um, one I've talked about on the channel, one I didn't. I just want to mention them. One is called Henley uh, Bloodline created by Hans Henley, and uh, some, uh, I think it was Will. Thank you, Will, for sending me that. I did a video on it. You can go check that out. It's a fantastic fragrance, full bottle worthy for sure. One of the best 
uh, cedar based fragrances I've ever smelled. Apparently it's from like a hundred year old cedar tree on his family's land. Uh, and so there's multiple types of woods in there. There's cedar, of course, and oak wood, uh, and this beautiful tobacco. And I remembered a gorgeous pine and patchouli. It was a great fragrance. I would love a full bottle of that. You can go check out my review on that. And then there's also a fragrance that was sent to me, and I can't find the little decant to show it on the video, but I will talk about it soon. It'll pop up one day. It's probably with my thousand samples that I have. It's from the House of Rogue Perfumery, and it's called Fougere Laube. And Fougère Laub is supposed to be a very, like, green, classy take on a Fougère. It has that geranium, um, you know, lavender, kumarin, and kumarin or uh, tonka bean can sometimes give off this hay-like feel. So it has this, um, you know, it has this hay-like vibe. This, uh, actually, this time of year is perfect for it. If you've ever been on a hay ride at a pumpkin patch and you get that, you know, dry, um, very tobacco-like, and, and, you know, many times I think that hay accord and tobacco accord can sometimes be interchangeably used or even woven together, um, and so I'm very excited to talk about that one on the channel. I'll just have to find the decant and get to it. That also came out in 2019. Of course it did, or it wouldn't be on the video. Okay, next is Erosia, and speaking of Erosia, I actually did an early impression video just yesterday on Erosia. You can go check it out. It was called United Arab Emirates, and I really enjoyed that perfume. That is also full bottle worthy, although I don't think I will be buying a bottle. Um, if I had one, I would absolutely wear it. I really enjoyed that one. And um, there was also a... Uh, here, here's the one from 2019, by the way. Uh, that was just a segue into the Rosia. Uh, catalog here. So the one we're going to talk about from 2019 one day very soon is called Oceania. And Oceania has this Arolfa-like vibe to it for, for me. Uh, he does use a trick that Roja uses very common, and I say it's a trick because it is kind of a sleight of hand trick for the nose. Uh, and it's a note called Litsea Kubiba, and you're going to see it again in the next Roja we talk about. Back-to-back -back Rojas have this note. And I've talked about this on the channel before, but it's basically this floral that gives off the impression of citruses, and it extends what your nose perceives as citrus as citrus notes. Usually citruses are very volatile, and they um, uh, evaporate very quickly off of your skin. That's why they're usually in the top of a note pyramid, because the evaporation happens very quickly with citruses. Uh, and this has lots of citruses in the top. There's lemon... Uh, there's lime, there's mandarin orange, there's bergamot, there's grapefruit, and then there's that, let's say, a kubiba note, which seems to just extend the citruses. Uh, and I get this green, um, you know, oceanic vibe with this fragrance, obviously, but the green parts are what kind of reminds me a little bit of Arolfa, because I have a vintage bottle of Arolfa, and there's lots of green notes floating around in that. It's not just a marine fragrance. There's a lot more going on. Um, kind of like uh, Edmund Rudnitska, who was actually um, the... He was actually the um, master teacher of Pierre Bourdon, made this in 1990, Ocean Rain. If you like these type of fragrances, Oceania, uh, Arolfa, Check out this one. This is kind of a hidden gem, but it's made by the master, the one that many people in the community and even perfumers themselves consider to be the greatest perfumer of all time. And this is a joy to wear. If you like uh, Rudnitska's, Edmund Rudnitska's work, uh, Ocean Rain is, is absolutely insane. I love it. Uh, okay, so you will hear a uh, video and early impression on Oceania very, very soon. Someone mentioned a petrichor note when they wear this. And I'm gonna have to wear it again, but I think that's a very interesting shout. This, uh, you know, early rain, kind of like the uh, Miti Atar uh, that uh, Russian Adam did for Arige Le Doré. We will have some Arige Le Dorés on the list, of course. So let's talk about the next Roja, and it is a Roja called Herod's Pour Homme, and it's another one that I already have a review on the channel. You can go check it out. Uh, there's a playlist for many of these brands. You can just click the playlist and go click the video you want to check out. Uh, but Herod's Pour Homme, and you can see I completely dried it. Uh, it is a beautiful fragrance. It's very uh, elegant, and 
it's very professional. It would go with an outfit like this. You know, if you're going to go to work and you're going to be dressed nice in, in a suit or at least nice slacks and a button-up shirt uh, with some good shoes, then this is a very nice fragrance for that because it'll never offend. And it also has lots of citruses and it has lots of... Um, that extension of the citruses by the, let's say, a Kubiba here, I think is even more noticeable than in Oceania. But what ends up happening here is it dries down to a little bit of a different perfume. It still has that Roja floral heart, which interestingly enough, that Roja floral heart even doesn't disappear when you go to a fragrance like Oceania. There's still jasmine from grass, elang, geranium, violet, jasmine sambac. And I uh, was talking about this yesterday when I was talking about United Arab Emirates. He's very... Um, you know, fundamental. That's a great word for Roja's perfumes. They're very fundamental. And they're fundamental in a way that uh, is is classically, almost classically trained. He likes to stick to, um, you know, the, the classic structure of how a perfume should be made. And he never really deviates from that. They just kind of move pieces around like pieces on a chessboard. Here they'll put something in the top or the mid or the heart or the base that's different. And But many of the classical structures of his fragrances are very similar. And uh, if you smell lots of roses, you'll, you'll pick up on these, these very common themes. Uh, and Herod's Porum has that, but instead of drying down to more of the oceanic, um, you know, petrichor-like vibe, this is going to dry down to more patchouli and galbanum, and there's a beautiful iris note in the base, uh, and a nice musk. So it's a... It's a good fragrance. Would I buy it for what they're selling it for? The Herod's exclusive for $600? Hell no. But uh, is it a good perfume? Yes, it is. And I think it's still available for purchase. Okay, another Roja, which I already have a video on the channel about, is called Roja Enigma Parfum Cologne. Now, I have a full bottle of uh, Enigma or Creation E, depending on which part of the world you buy it in. Parfum, pour on which came out many years ago, I think in 2014 or something. Um, and But the Parfum Colognes came out in 2019. And of all of the Parfum Colognes, uh, and I've spelled most of them, this is the one that I like the most, Enigma Porom Parfum Cologne. Um, it, uh, I actually, interestingly enough, I did a comparison video between this and the uh, Parfum. And... Uh, I said I enjoyed them both. Actually, I would absolutely wear this. This is uh, a good fragrance. It just feels a little bit, you know, I said the opening gives off this like cherry Pepsi-like vibe for me. Uh, this one gives off this like diet cherry Pepsi vibe, if that makes sense. It is freshened up and it probably is a little bit easier to wear, but you know what? Whenever I wear something like this, um, it's usually in the colder weather, and I don't want easy wears. I want stuff that's heavy. You know, I want the parfum, uh, but this is a fantastic fragrance. If you had to pick one parfum cologne, go with Enigma, in my opinion. Uh, Scandal is absolutely shite. Speaking of, Scandal is another one that I couldn't find the little sample that I have, but I'm going to do a comparison video one day between Scandal EDP, which is right there, and Scandal uh, pour on Parfum Cologne, which is, I have a sample somewhere. That also came out in 2019. The whole Parfum Cologne line did. But I don't have any of the other ones because I think they're shite. All right, next, uh, we are going to go to uh, the House of Papillon, which I do not think is shite. I love Liz Moore's work. She was actually on my channel. You can go check out my interview with her. And she is an amazing woman, amazing creator. Uh, and I think her house, her little niche house, is one of the best value for monies out there in the in the uh, you know in the niche world of perfumery. She doesn't upcharge. She doesn't try to sell you an extra when a eau de parfum with one percent less perfume oil will do the job just as well and triple the price. Uh, she she doesn't do any of those tricks. She is just an out and out honest, straightforward, solid. Uh, I think she's very solid uh, in her work and she's very creative. And I'm a big fan. And so um, she sent me this sample set. And I've done a couple of these already. But the one from 2019 is a perfume called Bengal Rouge. And actually, in our interview, if you watch, you will notice her cat coming in and out of the picture. 
And the very first thing that we talked about when we were backstage, she was telling me about her cat. I think he, I think the cat's name was Mimi, if memory serves. I have a terrible memory with names, but I, I think it was Mimi. And um, she was saying, Bengal Rouge is supposed to smell like Mimi when I pet her after wearing Shalimar. So she was saying, sometimes I she wears Shalimar, and I completely understand why. Shalimar is one of my, a top 10 perfume for me. I did a top 100. You can go check that out. And in that, the top 10, one of them was Shalimar. I forget which number it was, but it was well worth being in the top 10. It's, it's one of the most amazing discoveries of my perfume uh, journey. And it's one of the fragrances that completely ship, shifted the way that I think about perfume. Uh, as far as masculine, feminine, who can wear what, you know, what I feel comfortable wearing. I would throw Shalimar on and go anywhere. I'd go to work, I'd go to a party, I'd go out on a date with the wife, I would go, you know, hang out with the family. I, I would wear Shalimar anywhere. There's no restrictions for me on wearing something like Shalimar. Uh, and so this is supposed to be a take on that. It's like if when she wears Shalimar, and then she's, you know, petting all over her cat. And, you know, cats have that naturally animalic, musky type smell going on. But they're very clean normally. Uh, and then you smell the cat six day, six, six hours or, you know, the next day. And what does the cat smell like when it kind of mixes with the cat's natural musky smell? And so this is a take on that. It's, it's a take on Shalimar. And so I already love it because I love Shalimar. And I love Liz Moore's work, so I can't wait to talk about this one. Turkish Rose and Sandalwood, Honey, Apopanax, which is Sweet Myrrh, Vanilla, Tonka Bean, and Oak Moss. I mean, um, I don't know if I'd buy a bottle since I have many bottles of Shalimar already. And I have another on the way because I got such a fantastic price on an 80s bottle of Shalimar. I couldn't say no. Um, but Bengal Rouge is... Uh, one of the most, uh, uh, I'm so, I'm very excited to try Bengal Rouge out of all of her line that I haven't tried left, that I haven't tried yet. That's the one that's left I'm most excited to try. Okay, let's go to Nishane. And Nishane actually has um, a couple fragrances that are going to be in this video. Uh, one is a fragrance I haven't had the pleasure to smell yet, but I will do an early impression on it very soon. And it's called Saffron Colonnese. Okay, so you can see it's an extra, extra de cologne. How's that? Extra de cologne. Brilliant marketing by, by them, I think. And apparently this is a good fragrance from what I've heard. Uh, it is leather... Ambergris, saffron, pink pepper, passion fruit, uh, musk, citron, and magnolia. So this is more of a summery fragrance. I may wait to talk about this when the weather heats up. I don't know if I want to talk about a fragrance now that's a summer wear when everyone else is kind of gearing up to wear their heavy hitters because it's going to get cold, but uh, I'm very excited to try that. And then one I just recently did a video on that would work perfect for this weather. And Parfumo actually says it's top uh, seven in the most popular unisex fragrances in their entire universe. Uh, and it's called Nishane Nefs. And this is one that is kind of an uh, enigma for me because you would think I would, I would not like this fragrance because it is, um, very sweet. It has that Middle Eastern style. Uh, if you smelled Spirit of Dubai fragrances, stuff like that, you'll know what I mean. There's that Oud note, which I don't think Nishane claims to use real Oud, but just in case they do, so I don't get sued, uh, if the brand says they use real Oud, guess what? They use real Oud. Now, they may only use 0.0001, but there is real Oud in there if they say it. They won't lie to you. Uh, but this has that synthetic vibe, that synthetic Middle Eastern vibe, lots of amber wood, Oud, cinnamon, leather, and honey. I And you know what? Even though it was sweet, I really like the way that the saffron played off of the sweet honey in the opening. And there's a fig note in here, which is kind of hard to detect. I could see it. Um, I could see it as a thing, but it wasn't something that'll just jump right out. But I think it just adds, you know, a little bit of uh, texture 
a little bit of, you know, a curve to go around. And um, Neff's was a good one. I wouldn't buy a bottle, especially since that's from their, they call it their prestige collection. And they like double the price. Like Nishan A's aren't expensive enough. But uh, I did like that one. I'm excited to try more from that collection because I hear they have a couple. Okay, next we're going to talk about a uh, brand I haven't talked about on the channel at all. So I'll be doing some late night insider quick hit videos on this brand. It's it's uh, Oz's brand, Oswald uh, Paré, or, or I don't know how you say his last name. I apologize, Par. Uh, and it's this is uh, Motif Olfactif is the brand. And this one's called Murmur Chifra. Or Shipra, if you would prefer. But um, Murmur Shifra is um, this green, spicy Shifra. And I haven't had a chance to wear it yet. But it sounds amazing. It sounds like it's something that I would really enjoy. Uh, jasmine and patchouli and leather and lots of civet, apparently. So I'm excited to try that one out. And I'm a huge Shifra lover, gigantic. Uh, it's, it's probably my favorite category. You know, stuff like Diaghilev and Mitsuko, Rochas Femme, you know. Uh, they're, they're some of my holy grail fragrances. Okay, there's another one from the brand called Voila de Encens. I like the name. And um, this is Elemi Frankincense, Rhubarb, Pear, Rose, Jonathan1970, uh, who we did a uh, live stream with just about a week ago. Mentioned he's on a rhubarb hunt. And so this could be one to put on the list, Jonathan. Uh, voila d'encens. By the way, he is starting a channel. I actually went and subscribed to him so I could be ready for when those videos drop. I don't want to miss anything. So I'd say go subscribe to him now for in anticipation if you're a fan of Jonathan. You can just subscribe to him, uh, his YouTube channel right now. And hopefully there'll be some great content coming soon. I know Jonathan is extremely knowledgeable, and we're all kind of waiting. Uh, once the videos start flowing, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely amazing. Those are the kind of people that love perfume, and they're not on here to, you know, um, hype up a brand. You know, they don't do the influencer, oh my god, this is the most amazing thing I've ever smelled. You know, uh, they don't do that. Th those are the kind of people, the people who l just love perfume, who have a giant collection, who know their stuff, who have been doing it for years. Those are the kind of people that Fragcom wants to see do videos. Um, and so I hope more people like that will come forward because there's a, you know, there's a big hole in Fragcom for knowledgeable, passionate people about perfume. There's many people out there that want to use this hobby as a platform. You know, they want to use it like they're graduating uh, and they're moving on to the next level because they're going to be a YouTube star. And that's not what the community wants. They want people who want to, you know, be able to discuss fragrances in depth, uh, discuss it with passion. And it's something that they love and can share with with the world. Uh, and so there's a lot there's a shortage of those people out there. There's many people that want to get the free bottles and just show it off to the camera and say, ooh, this smells yummy and delicious and mmm. Uh, but there's not many people on here who, you know, want to really discuss the art and the love of perfume. They want to do it for other reasons. And so the people who are like that, we, I would say the, the community is kind of waiting with open arms for more of you to, to join, join us. Uh, okay, so there's two perfumes from uh, Peter Carter. And if you don't know Peter Carter, he does have his own uh, YouTube channel as well, and his brand is called Centauri Perfumes, and there's a couple of them here that I plan on doing early impressions on very soon, uh, one of which is called Gaia, and Gaia is earthy and green with lavender soil, honey, tuberose, amber, real ambergris, uh, cedarwood, apple, orris, and so that's uh, one I'm very much looking forward to doing a video on, and, and I'll usually wear these as my scent of the day. I have enough juice to wear this as my scent of the day. And uh, the other one that I'm really excited about from 2019 uh, is a fragrance called um, Dendera. And 
Dendera is um, a resinous, spicy fragrance. This is probably the one I'm most excited about. Myrrh, cinnamon, frankincense, labdanum, nutmeg, and real Vietnamese oud, and real white ambergris, and bourbon vanilla absolute. So hoping it's not the super sweet kind, but I've got high hopes for, uh, for Dendra. Uh, Dendra is um, inspired by the beauty and mystery of ancient Egypt. Egypt. So, my kind of fragrance. Okay, next on the list we have, um, we have a Lesson de Modables from 2019, and this is probably one of the most, one of, okay, the most amazing rose fragrances in my collection. I don't have any full bottles of Lesson de Modable because I have a friend, and I did a video on this too, you can check it out, um, who has a YouTube channel, uh, and he sells these fantastic decants, and they're 10 mils, which is more than enough juice for me to wear and chat about it on the channel and get to know it. Um, and this one's called Rose de Jamal. Okay, so Rose de Jamal is um, a floral green rose fragrance uh, with Moroccan Rose Absolute, and apparently there is a real rose landowner and farmer, Rose Farmer, named Jamal in Morocco, and they used Jamal's roses in here, and that's how they got the name. Cool little story. Uh, but it's lavender and geranium. There's very common, very common to use geranium with rose, uh, but it's a beautiful fragrance. If you like stuff like Lyric Man, if you like stuff like Aramis 900, those rose-heavy fragrances, um, Actor by Azaro, check out Rose de Jamal, it's beautiful. Okay, next is a Julian Raskinet creation. And many of his perfumes are extremely hyped. He did Rare Fidelis for uh, Histoire de Parfum, which is one of my absolute favorites. One of my favorite coffee fragrances. Coffee and Oud, it's beautiful. Um, and he did another fragrance coming up later in this video from 2019 that's extremely expensive. $700, $800, $900 perfume, depending on how big of a size you get. And he did this. Uh, St. DuPont, Perfect Tobacco. Uh, I don't have a full bottle, as you can see, but I will do a video on this before my decant is gone. Uh, this is, you know, this should have been called Perfect Oud. Uh, and the reason I say Perfect Oud, it's not a Perfect Oud fragrance, but it's one of those... Uh, you know, almost photorealistic designer oud fragrances, if that makes sense. It smells the way you would expect a designer oud fragrance to smell. Oud and vanilla with rose and tobacco, cinnamon and ginger in the top. And you know what? This is another one, very similar to um, Original Santal. I was talking about the sweetness in Original Santal early. I give sweet fragrances a very hard time. I'm very tough on them. I, I usually don't rate them very well. And the reason is because um, it comes across as very juvenile to me, very childish, if you will. You know, not what a man should smell like. I grew up smelling on my, you know, family members and my father and elder, you know, mentors and coaches and stuff like that. Polo Green, Paco Rabanne Poron, you know, that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that I assumed men wore. So when you smell something like this that's ultra sweet or original Santal, original, you know, um, originally in my brain, I always associated this with feminine fragrances. Now, the sweetness I also associate with childish fragrances or, or juvenile fragrances is probably a better word. But, you know, I enjoyed this. I wore this to work. Uh, and this is a big projector, by the way. I think there's probably a lot of amber woods in here. A lot of those synthetics that make it last a long time. But if you're going to pay $700 for, you know, some of Julian Raskinet's other creations, which are very good, mind you. He's he's one of my favorite perfumers. I love Julian Raskinet. I think he's a very smart guy, too. Um, you know, this is this is worth a sniff at 90 bucks for 100 mil. St. DuPont does not get very much love, but for a... Um, for a winter perfume, if you want something enveloping and warm, this is one to check out. I'll do a full review very soon. St. DuPont Perfect Tobacco. Okay, 
Next, we're going on to a Serge Luton's, which is also probably full bottle worthy. You're going to find a lot of decants in my collection because we're at that 2019 uh, point in time where new fragrances don't capture my attention the way that the old ones do. So what do I do? I go for a decant. So I can still experience the fragrance, but I don't have to put that much cash into it because full bottles are getting very expensive. Uh, this is Serge Luton's La Couche du Diable. And uh, this is resinous and smoky. And I love labdanum as a note. So if you've been following kind of my journey uh, and the things that I like, I've talked very highly about labdanum uh, fragrances or perfumes that use labdanum. Roja is a huge fan of labdanum. Uh, and I did a review of a fragrance call, from the zoo called Everlasting. That's a fantastic labdanum. Uh, Le Leon is one of my favorite labdanums. There's a beautiful labdanum note in Roja's Hout Lux, Roja's $3,500 bottle shit, which is insane if you guys get your nose on that. I sent some to Eugene. Uh, he got a chance to sniff it in his, uh, he did like an early impressions video on it. And it's a very complex fragrance, but there's tons of labdanum in it. And I really, really like labdanum as a note. Um, I think it's one of the few notes that are just so beautiful you could just wear it on its own. You know, it is, it could easily be a perfume on its own. Uh, and then you mix it with oud. And the oud here doesn't smell like the oud in ST DuPont per ter Perfect Tobacco. It doesn't have that designer-esque oud feel. This feels like it's a step up. It doesn't feel as high as Bortnikoff or Ariz La Doré or Ensar Oud, okay? But it's definitely a step up from what you get from the designers. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. It does have this vinegary opening. And I talked, I did a video on this. You can check this one out as well. But uh, I talked about this on my early impressions video that there's this vinegar-like opening, which I really did not like the first time I wore it. Um, and, but the more it lasted on my skin the longer it stayed on my skin the more I liked it the more I enjoyed it so um, if it wasn't for the fact that I'm boycotting the house of Serge Luton's I'm not buying any of their new uh, style bottles with the big black labels I would have a bottle of this it's it's that good but um, since I'm boycotting the bottles decant it is I probably don't need a bottle anyways but um, okay Next, we're going to another house that has not gotten any love on the channel yet, although it will very soon. It's from the house of Aaron Terrence Hughes. Uh, there's this cool little unicorn logo, uh, and it's called Tabak from 2019. This is thanks to my um, perfume god person. You know who you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've done so much for me and the channel. Um, I owe you. I owe you. Uh, so this is Tabak, Aaron Terrence Hood, Aaron Terrence Ood, Aaron Terrence uh, Hughes, and apparently there was a version of Tabak from maybe 2019 or something that was discontinued, or there was an Ood he did from 20. Um, there was an Ood that he did, I think, from 2019. Not not this one. So his fragrances have gone through different looks as well. His original bottles didn't look like these all black ones. Uh, but this is tobacco with bourbon vanilla, more tobacco, damask rose, Burmese oud, cedar, and ambergris. And you know what? Um, I've, I've worn this to bed a couple times now, and I enjoy this. I like it. I wouldn't buy a bottle. It's not bottle worthy to me, at least not yet. But it is good. Uh, I like it. It's actually compared on Parfumo to a fragrance I already have a full bottle of uh, called Oud Tabak. Someone told me this is the worst fragrance in their collection today in the comments. And it is, it's not the best. I mean, I should have just bought Tobacco Vanille. I tried to be cheap and I bought this instead. But if there was a choice, I would, I think I would take the Aaron Terrence Hughes. But uh, yes, you'll hear more about this on the channel soon. And then... We have a couple of Dior's. So in 2019, in 2019, there were a couple of Dior's uh, that got put out, and one is Spice Blend. So I'll do a video on this soon. This is a little seven and a half mil, just little baby bottle, so I can talk about a fragrance that I normally wouldn't be able to, and I got a great deal on it. So 
Sometimes you don't always need 100 ml bottles to enjoy stuff, especially when you have a big collection. So Spice Blend is uh, another Francois Demachy creation towards the end of his career at Dior, which was very simple, okay? Uh, this is rum absolute with bay rum and spices, and that's all, that's all they list. And there's this, you know, as Dior came to the end of Francois Demachy's career, there's this underlying sweetness in these little uh, privés that the privés um, that he released towards the end of his career, they seem to have this underlying generic sweetness to them. They don't feel special. They don't feel like they deserve to be called a Dior Private Blend. You know, this is so different from um, Leather Oud, for example, which is probably my favorite of the private blends. Uh, but I'll, I'll check it out. It's not bad, but would I go run out and buy a full bottle of that? No, I don't think I would. Okay, next uh, is one I do own a full bottle of, but it's the only blue fragrance I own, or, or I think the only true blue fragrance. You could argue others from the collection have a blue t you know, tint here or there. But this is one of the true Ambroxan bombs that I own, and it's called Sauvage Parfum. It's the Parfum version from 2019. And you know what? Uh, I would wear this fragrance more if it wasn't for the fact that everyone smells like this. Every time I smell somebody at work or I walk past someone, and most people I don't smell cologne on them, but when I do, when I smell a perfume on somebody, Many times it's a metallic blue fragrance, whether it's this, uh, whether it's blue to Chanel, whether it's, you know, one of those designer fragrances with huge throw that you would expect someone to wear at a club, like Versace Eros, they're wearing it to work in an office setting because it's their one bottle, you know, and they just wear it everywhere. And so I just, I don't like smelling like everyone else, you know what I mean? That's the, that's the thing. Um... So I almost never wear it. I'll spray it on at night to remind myself what it's like, but it is my favorite of the Sauvages. Although when I bought it in 2019, um, obviously Sauvage Elixir didn't come out. That just came out last year, I think, uh, or uh, uh, even maybe this year. Uh, but within the last year or so, it's came out. And I think the Elixir is probably my favorite now that I've smelled them all. Uh, but if I can't have the Elixir, I'd, I'd wear the Parfum. Okay, so two Francesca Bianchis, one an early impression coming soon, and one a full bottle uh, that uh, I still have to do a video on. So this is thanks to Nissan. Thank you, Nissan. It was very kind of you sending these to me. Uh, one of the samples, and I did a review off of Ensar Oud. Uh, he sent me a decant of an Ensar Oud, E-01 Oud Assam. You can go check that out. Didn't impress me as much as I expected an Ensar Oud of that caliber to, to impress me, but it was a pleasure to wear. So thank you for sending him to me. And this is called uh, The Black Knight by Francesca Bianchi. And The Black Knight is supposed to be a leathery, spicy fragrance with that honeyed beeswax that Francesca Bianchi, uh, you know, she mixes this honey and oris together many a times. She's very famous for her Oris butter that she uses. And, um, you know, it's uh, it, it does seem like it's a little bit of a brand DNA that she's trying to go for. The full bottle I have is this one, Etruscan Water. And I bought this because Persolet said, I bought this blind in 2019, brand new when it first came out. Uh, and the reason I, I bought uh, Etruscan Water is because Persolet said it's like a modern Azure by Estee Lauder. And I said, holy shit, Azure, that's my favorite leather chiffre of all time, basically. Um, and so I ran and bought this immediately and I got it in. I was like, Azure is a thousand times better than this. Um, and that was pretty much the end of my love affair with Francesca Bianchi. However, um, they did have... Uh, I did a video on a fragrance she did called Under My Skin, and I did enjoy that. Um, I wouldn't go out and buy a bottle because I have Bala Versailles Parfum, and I think they're pretty close, and I have Salome, and they Salome is better by the House of Papillon. I would just buy, 
you know, Papillon over Francesca Bianchi is what it comes down to, but I will wear this. I'll continue to wear this and I will do a full video on it soon. Etruscan water. It's not bad. It's just, um, probably one of the safer from the houses, from, from the houses release releases. Um, okay. Next we have some Arige Le Doré and God, I wish I knew about Arige Le Doré like all these years ago. I mean, I did, but I didn't really get a chance to dive into the house like I did after Russian Adam uh, sent me many of these samples. And you guys sent me a lot of these samples too. Two of the full bottle, the ones that are on my full bottle list that if you said, Ramsey, pick an Arige Le Doré or two, the these are the two, there's two out on the samples um, that I'm going to show you that I really want full bottles of. Number one is Antiquity. And I did a video on this. You can go check it out. Uh, Antiquity is stunning. I think it said, I think when I did the video, if memory serves, I said that Antiquity uh, makes me feel like I am on a, uh, on a train from the 1800s or early 1900s. And I'm watching like, you know, the Guerlain perfumers I'm watching like on a train, watching the history of vintage Guerlain perfumers kind of just pass me by and watching the world around me change, you know. But in, in one train ride, I'm just watching the, the Guerlain perfumers go in one go all the way from the start. You know, generations of them come and go in creations and I could smell them in the boxcar. But the visuals were like I was in an old timey train just watching all this pass me by. It was absolutely stunning, leathery and animalic, and I love the old school carnation. I love the the Russian leather, um, the patchouli in the base, uh, and there's this vintage peach aldehyde in the top that uh, will remind you of vintage Guerlain's and Chanel's. It's beautiful. Uh, and then probably my favorite musk fragrance. Actually, I'm gonna say that I think it is my favorite musk, just out and out musk. Uh, it's called Siberian Musk. Now, this is actually the first one. The second one is the one that came out in 2019, but I do have both. I can't find the second one. And I did a comparison video. So again, if you go to Ariz Ladore's uh, playlist, you can find the comparison video. And I did a comparison between the two. And it wouldn't matter to me. One or two, they were both amazing. This first one, God, I mean... I could just sit here and smell this. This is this is honestly uh, a spiritual experience. Just smelling this. This is like uh, this is a spiritual moving experience when you smell this because real deer musk has this. God, it's like you know, it's like you're it's like you're what you would imagine Jesus would smell like. You know what I mean? That's that's what this. This particular fragrance reminds me of this Siberian musk. So check out the comparison video if you're interested. And then the uh, final Arige La Dore that's on my full bottle list or right at the top next to Antiquity is Ottoman Empire. One, two, three, four. I mean, I don't really care. Russian Adam says he never changed the formula. He still uses the same notebook and the same ingredients now that he, you know, used the very first time. And what's so amazing about this fragrance, my God, what's so amazing about this fragrance is it has this spicy floral, like animalic, um, you know, lots of oud and myrrh and resins and, you know, it has that lava-like feel that you get in some of his uh, later creations like Russian oud. But the florals are absolutely gorgeous. The rose, the oud, amber... Uh, and, and what really just shocks me with this is this is his first fragrance he ever created. That is unbelievable. Um, so Ottoman Empire 2 from 2019 would be right on my full bottle list for Arige Le Doré. Okay, so let's move on to some full bottles from the collection. Uh, I stole this one from my wife, and you can see she wears this. She's put quite the dent in, into this. This is YSL's Libra. Eau de Parfum, and this is created by Anne uh, Filippo and Carlos Benaim, two amazing perfumers. 
But what they basically created is a floral, sweet, mass appealing fragrance. There's lots of neroli, so it opens up very fresh. If you imagine that fresh neroli, fresh laundry vibe, uh, but it dries to very sweet uh, vanilla, lavender and vanilla, um, and orange blossom. And um, it smells nice on her, but uh, I I probably wouldn't buy it for her again. Let's put it that way. It's okay. Uh, next is a Gucci, and this is Gucci Guilty Cologne Pour Homme. I'm so used to saying Gucci Guilty Absolute, it almost just came out. Uh, but this is, uh, Alberto Morias created this one, and this is interesting. As far as a fresh fragrance, as far as, like, a very fresh take on a cologne goes that you can just kind of throw on, it's kind of fresh and woody, and um, there's this Spanish cypress note, which is probably my favorite part of the whole fragrance, because everything else is a little boring. I mean, it does have the freshness of juniper berries in the opening. The uh, rosemary makes it masculine. If you think back to stuff like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme with that rosemary note. Uh, and there's uh, heliotropin, violet, patchouli, cedar, and lots of white musks. So it's very wearable for the summer. Um, these aren't my favorite kind of fragrances, but they do have a place. Uh, so I will talk about this probably next summer when it warms up again. And then uh, a fragrance that I'm thinking about doing a comparison video to a very expensive Killian fragrance. It's called Ligno by the house of Jeroboam. Now, this house gets no talk, no love. And um, this fragrance caught my attention because um, I think... And again, it's not listed anywhere in any of the search engines, but to my nose, this is very close to Straight to Heaven Extreme by Killian, which is a discontinued, uh, the extreme version of, of uh, Straight to Heaven is discontinued. And uh, the difference is, is that there's no liqueur note. I think there's a rum note in Straight to Heaven Extreme. I can't remember which, which liquor was used, but this feels like there's a liquor note, right? So it has this straight to heaven extreme vibe, um, but there's technically no liqueur note. Um, but it's got saffron, ambergris, labdanum, which is uh, very prominent, rose, musk, and the number one note in this, uh, according to my nose, would be patchouli. The patchouli on this is amped up compared to state, straight to heaven extreme. The liquor vibe is kind of toned down. There's not even a liquor note listed. And of course, there's Tonka in the base, but um, it uh, it's probably a fifth of the price of Straight to Heaven Extreme, and it does the job just as well. And if you like patchouli, maybe even better. Okay, here's one that uh, is perfect for the hot for the holiday coming up. It is Halloween Man X from 2019, probably the best selling from this brand. And you know what? If you like to wear uh, mass appealing fragrances. If you like to wear, um, you know, sweeter like Salvatore Ferragamo, Womo, or Versace Eros, those kind of sweet fragrances, check this out. Um, this is probably too immature for me right now because it is this sweet gourmand like fragrance. I'm kind of past all this stuff. But as far as, you know, bargain bin fragrances go, you know, for 20 bucks or 30 bucks at discounters for 100 mil, it's not bad. It's lavender, cardamom, lemon, whiskey, roasted coffee, uh, leather, cinnamon, mineral notes, tonka bean, amber, and frankincense. Um, so it's not that bad of a fragrance. I, uh, I would recommend giving it a sniff if you're into that kind of stuff. Okay, so there is a perfume that uh, I want to talk about that it actually just hit me and I completely forgot to put it on the list, but it needs to be discussed because uh, many people in the Fragcom are talking about this fragrance right now from 2019 and it's called Ganymede. And I actually did a full video on this. You can go check it out on the channel. Marc Antoine Bawa, uh, Quinton Biche. Created this and Rich Mitch came up with the nickname Beach Mode, one of the best nicknames out there. And this is Italian Mandarin Orange, Saffron, Violet, Osmanthus Absolute, Immortel Absolute, and this gigantic Akigala Wood Note. Huge, enormous. Um, 
It smells, <laughs> well, go check out my review if you want to know what it smells like and you've never smelled it, but it smells very 20, very sci-fi, uh, futuristic, the Jetsons, you know, stuff like that comes to mind. Uh, okay. Next, we're going to talk about a flanker of a very famous fragrance. Uh, this is called Pasha de Cartier Parfum. Now, I have a tester, so I don't have the cap, but so what? Uh, I'm going for the juice. And this is an updated take from the uh, Pasha from 1990, uh, the Fougere. This is amber, sandalwood, patchouli, balsamic notes, uh, or balsam fir resins, and some... Um, Liquor. There's some liquor note in here. I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, I think it's probably rum, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if it's whiskey or what. Um, but it is very nice. This is a this is a nice update uh, to to a fragrance. It's very common now for these fragrances to add this liqueur note and kind of you know try to modernize their older fragrances with flankers. Cartier does good work, so. Um, very charismatic fragrance. Um, one that I think would go well at the office or something like that, too. Okay, next, uh, we're going to talk about a Guerlain. And a fragrance that, this is one of the few fragrances Rich Mitch and I disagree on. Our noses are very similarly aligned. Uh, and so you don't, you're not going to find very often that he doesn't like something, and I do. Uh, and so this is called Guerlain's Queer Entente. And maybe my bias for leather is what pushes this over the edge for me. Plus, this has osmanthus in it. And I did it. This is not a top 10 osmanthus video. And osmanthus is a note I love. I'm learning I really love osmanthus. Many osmanthus fragrances are a hit for me. This is the main notes to this are osmanthus, leather, and tobacco. Uh, with some woods underneath. But that leather is... I mean... So, IBQ, isobutyl quinoline, or whatever it is, I'm sure that that's what they're using in here. But if you love leather, and you like the old, hardcore leathers, if you like stuff like Bel Ami from the 80s, like I do, it's my favorite fragrance of all time, um, check out Queer Entente. It is worth a sniff. I really like this stuff. But it is heavy. It's in the Middle Eastern style. This is like, these bottles are the Middle Eastern Guerlain bottles. So... Imagine a Middle Eastern style projection and strength, but a leather take instead of an oud take. Amazing. I love it. I, I absolutely love this stuff. So it's a winner for me. Okay, next we're going to go to uh, the House of Nishane again. And from 2019, this is Ani. So Ani... Um, is created by Cecile Zeroki, and it kind of had some hype in 2019. And I must admit, I did blind buy this. This was a blind buy for me. Uh, and do I regret it now? Yes, I do. Um, well, I'm going to wear it. And uh, it's a vanilla, and vanillas are a dime a dozen nowadays. This one is, is freshened up with this uh, Thai ginger note and blackcurrant Turkish rose. And then there's that, you know, resinous, uh, benzoin, vanilla thing in the base. It's not bad. It's just not good. Uh, it's not good. It made my list of fragrances that I used to love that I hate now. Um, you can go check that video out if you would like. But, uh, yes, it is, uh, I mean, I'm going to wear it. I, I'm, my plan is to do a, a full review on every fragrance I own. And so I'm going to, I wear my fragrances. Even if I don't like something, I will force myself to wear it because I want to continue to understand what I don't like. Uh, and I want to kind of mentally file all that. So I, um, that is one of my downfalls is that I don't wear my most loved fragrances enough because I'm focusing on kind of trying to wear everything. Uh, and so one of my goals for my New Year's resolution this year is going to be to wear more of my favorites, more of my, you know, top 10, top 20, top 30 of all time favorites. Okay, let's talk about some Frederick Malls because there's a couple from 2019 and I love them both. Uh, actually, this is one of the few fragrances right here that I have in a 50 mil that I wish I had in a 100 mil. Very rarely does that happen. 
This is Jean-Claude Elena's Rose and Queer. I absolutely love this stuff. And I think it's brilliant. Uh, it's bourbon geranium, black currant, Nepalese Sichuan pepper with vetiver, cedarwood, and leather in the base. So there's no rose in Rose and Queer. The leather is very soft, uh, but it has this beautiful green um, opening. You know, the geranium, the bourbon geranium adds this, uh, you know, green, almost like you're just smelling, you know, the stem of a rose flower. Uh, it's beautiful. And the projection, the longevity, I mean, this stuff lasts all day on me. For the warm weather, for in Texas, it's warm nine months of the year. This stuff is stunning. I love it. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a hit, huge hit. Uh, not many people talk about this anymore. I know Eugene was kind of disappointed when this came out because he was saying, "Where's the ro Where's the queer?" You know, he was expecting like a heavy leather, and it's not. It's very light to it to the Jean Claude Elena style. But man, it's so good, uh, so so good. And if you like your fragrances heavier, here's the fragrance for you. This is from 2019 from, uh, you know, their Desert Gem collection. And this is Moon. The Moon. Sorry, it's Dawn that is only Dawn. The Moon. Uh, and this is a Julian Rasconet, like I was referring to earlier. If you would pay $800 for this, then 90 bucks for this is definitely worth a sniff. Now, this is obviously a superior fragrance to me. Uh, the ingredients are superior, the blending is superior, though when I wear this, I feel like I'm wearing something special. It has one of the most amazing lychee notes I've ever smelled. Only in Zonka have I smelled lychee as good as this in the opening with raspberry and that frankincense, rose, oud leather combo in the mid and base is a killer in the moon. It is a killer and this stuff is nuclear. It lasts forever and ever. Um... But man, it's good. I love this stuff. And this is about the time I get the itch to start wearing stuff like this. So it's the end of October. Halloween's less than a week away. Um, yes, that's the, we're at about my favorite time of the year. All right, let's talk about a couple Bortnikoffs and a couple M. Wages, and we'll be done with 2019. So first, we're going to talk about uh, this little bad boy. Oud Monarch. One of my favorite chocolatey ouds. The other being Russian Oud, which I've talked about many a times before. But these two are the Chocolate Oud Grails. Absolute Grails right here. Uh, you can't do Chocolate Oud better than the two that I was holding in my hand. Oud Monarch is... The florals in Oud Monarch are so underrated. Uh, Magnolia, Frangipani, May Rose, and Himalayan Rose. And they just form this this, you know, austere elegance. It just, when it mixes with the cacao and the cinnamon, the, the oud, there's both civet and castorium. It made my, you know, countdown on civet and it made my countdown on castorium. Uh, it's so, so good. Uh, I wish the oud was more animalic. If you wish the oud was more animalic, and check out Lao Oud by, the, by Bortnikov. It's a little bit more animalic. Um, and then, in 2019, what used to be my favorite musk until I smelled uh, Siberian musk. Uh, and actually, you know what? There, I'm, I'm doing uh, a Riz Ladoy a, di a disservice because I just realized I did not grab one of his fragrances that should make the list. So I'm going to uh, add it to the list at the very end. I don't have the bottle to show you, but I have shown it uh, before on the channel. And it's called War and Peace. And War and Peace is actually uh, one of my favorite real deer musk fragrances. So War and Peace, the Siberian musk, and this one are my favorite uh are my favorite uh, musk fragrances. And this is Musk Khabib. 
But yes, I can't believe I forgot to grab one piece. But I do these videos in one shoot. I don't stop them. Uh, so I'm just going to posthumously add it. Uh, sorry about that, War and Peace. But uh, I do love you. And uh, Musk Habib is uh, amazing, though. It also has that floral. There's a langy lang in here. Beautiful lang with uh, cardamom, nutmeg, cedarwood, tolu balsam, deer musk. And it literally feels like even though I like Siberian musk better because it's um, more piercing, the, the musk feels like it's, the musk in Siberian musk feels like you're like literally sniffing where a deer just pissed and you're getting that musky, you know, vibe. This feels like you're petting a deer's fur. And you can kind of tell you're next to animalic musk, you know, uh, but you're not really just sniffing the the musk out and out you know what i mean it's a little bit more uh restrained i like the in your face the the this is a very in your face fragrance this siberian musk go check out my uh comparison video god i need to find a full bottle of this that is so damn good but musk habib is also good but i don't think it's as good as uh i think i think people would say this is more wearable because it has this uh, vanilla in the base, whereas I I uh, don't get the vanilla vibe from Siberian Musk. So yes, uh, there is a little bit of vanilla in Musk in in uh, Siberian Musk, I think. But uh, let's see, let's see, is there vanilla in Siberian Musk? Um. What is the verdict? The verdict is there is no vanilla. Nope, oh, there's no vanilla. I think it's I think it's better. I think Siberian musk is superior personally, but uh, it's very hard to find. So if I ever find a bottle, I'm gonna try to scoop it up though. All right, let's do the last two amouages, and then we'll be done with the year 2019. Only a couple more of these to go. It's exciting. Uh, so first. Amouage is going to be this underrated gem. Look at the dent in my bottle. That is Portrayal Man. Um, one of the best violet leaf gasoline openings ever that no one talks about. God. If you like Fahrenheit, this is a must. I'm telling you, um, this is completely underrated. Uh, I will do a full review on this. AC from the channel Smells Good did an amazing review on this. Uh, the vetiver and the violet leaf just combines to smell, and it just smells so unique. It has this smoky, woody, floral. There's some cade oil in here, I think, which makes it give off the smoky. There's Canary Islands Juniper, which I think might be cade oil. Um, God. You know, and the thing about it is, this one had to grow on me. This was not an instant love at first sniff. Uh, and then once I kind of wore it and understood it, it was like, this is a hidden gem. No one talks about this. Uh, now, here's one people do talk about, and they should. It's probably one of my favorite cognac fragrances. This and Roja's um, Enigma are the two cognac fragrances that would compete for the crown. 2019, Amouage. Overture man. Look at the look at the presentation MWAS used to do. The curtain coming down on Overture. And I actually like these boxes. Um I like this box better than the box that uh they're now using. The box that I unboxed yesterday for Opus 13, you know, Silver Ood. That box was shit. Um seems like they're really trying to save money. So I have one of the original Overture Man bottles where it was written on the side. I think the very next year is when they did the name on the front. I don't know if any reforms happened, but man, this stuff is so stunning. You know, it's kind of animalic. It opens up uh, fresh with grapefruit and ginger, but that cognac note is... <sighs> I need to wear this soon. I've been waiting for the weather to get cold. And it's going to happen very soon. 
Oh, it's so good in the cold. I can't wait. So that's 2019. Let me know what your favorites are. Thanks to everyone who uh, always watches and subscribe and comments. I love reading the comments. I love interacting with you guys. Uh, you know, that's one of the best parts of having a channel is the interaction, the back and forth. So cheers, guys. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye.